Hello guys, once again welcome back to another Android application development tutorial. In this video we are going to learn about what is the difference between implicit and explicit intent. So if you know the exact class name of an activity you can use the explicit intent to start that activity. <coughs> you can start an activity by using the action specified in the intent filter section using an implicit intent. Also, you can start an activity available in another application using implicit intent. Anyway, here I am going to show you what is the exact difference between explicit and implicit intent using a complete example. So we can create a new Android Studio project. Here I specify the app name as app A. Select empty activity. Okay, here our project is created in Android Studio. So first here I am going to add to another activity to this Android Studio project. So first I close all these files. Now here I am going to create a new activity. I need an empty activity. Here I name it as share post. Okay, now the new activity is created. Now we can add some user interface. Go to the layout, go to design. Here I'm going to add a simple text view. Uh, first specify the constraints. Here I'm going to change the top margin into 150 dp. <coughs> Now here I am going to modify the text appearance, share post here and I am going to make the text into bold, I will modify the text size into 30 dp, ok. So that is enough, this is the user interface for the share post activity. Now here I am going to add one more activity, so create another activity select empty activity so this is called the send to mail send to mail activity finish so now another activity is created uh, also we can add some user interface so i go to the previous activity uh, copy this text to view now go to the newly created layout So anyway, here in this application, now we have two, three activities. First one is the main activity, uh, second one is send to mail, and third one is share post. So now we can check the manifest file. So here in this project, we have three activities. So of course, the manifest, need, uh, manifest must contain three activity elements. So this is the first activity, that is the main activity. So uh, for this activity, we have an Indian filter section. So the Indian filter section contains two properties. First one is the action and category. So here it is the main activity. So here the action is action main and the category is launcher. <coughs> okay. So anyway, uh, this is our uh, second activity called share post and here is the third activity uh, that is called the send to mail. Okay. So now here I am going to show you. First here I am going to show you what is mean by explicit intent. So you can use an explicit intent to start an activity if you know the exact class name of an activity. So here we have two activities send to mail and share post. So that means uh, we know the exact class name. So now we need to add some user interface inside main activity. So I close all these files. Now open resource, open layout, open activity main.xml. Here there is a text to view, remove that one. So here I'm I'm going to add some user interface. I need one button here. Specify the constraints first. Uh, for this button, I modify the top margin into 150 dp. Also, here I'm going to change the width into 150 dp. Okay. 
so now modify the text now here it is share post now specify an on click method So this is the first button now I need to add one more button specify the constraints now here also I modify the margin into 50 dB okay so here also I change the layout width into 50 Now modify the text into sent mail. Spelling mistake, send mail. Okay. This, this. Okay, so now we need an on click method sent mail. So this is the user interface for the main activity. I'll go to the layout. So now we need to implement this method inside main activity class file. So create that method inside main activity. Now this is the second method. You can use this uh, shortcut key alt enter to create that method inside main activity. Okay. So here we have two methods available inside main activity. So first here I'm going to start the first activity that means the share post activity using an explicit intent. So you can use explicit indent if you know the exact class name of an activity so here the activity class name is sent to mail so here i am going to use an explicit indent to start that particular activity so create an indent object new indent if it is an explicit indent you have to pass two parameter first one is the context so here i pass the activity context second one is the class name of an activity so here the class name is share post dot class so now this intent is an explicit intent now we can start activity so start activity intent so we can test it so i open some android virtual device it's already running so we can open it okay anyway i'm going to run it so run the project Okay, now the project available on our virtual device so click the shell post so here that particular activity is open here so this is an example of explicit intent now I'm going to start the second activity using implicit intent so if you want to start an activity using implicit intent that activity must have some intent filter section inside manifest so now I go to the Android manifest.xml uh, this is our second activity sent to mail so for this activity here I am going to add some indent filter section. So specify an indent filter. So here uh, I am going to specify some attribute called uh, action. Now specify its name. So here I specify the action as action sent. That means this particular activity is capable of sending some data. That is meant by action okay so this is an essential component for an indent filter you must implement an action for an indent filter okay now here i'm going to specify an optional optional attribute called uh, data and you have to specify the mind type into here i specify the mind type into text to plane that means this activity is capable of a plain text to data that is mean by the data attribute now i'm going to specify a category and will name into i'm going to specify the category as category default that means this activity is capable of receiving launcher request so that is the uh, use of this attribute so now this activity has an indent filter so now we can start this activity use an explicit indent sorry implicit indent filter okay Anyway, go to main activity. Now I'm going to start the second activity using implicit intent. So first here I'm going to create an intent object. So here this is an uh, implicit intent. 
So there is no <coughs> parameters for the constructor. Okay. So now here I'm going to put some property for the object. So first one set action. I'm going to specify the set action in do intent dot action sent. That means this intent filter invoke any activity that has an action of send. That, that means any activity <coughs> that capable of sending data. Okay. Now we can specify the type of data. So we can use this method set to type. So we need to send some plain text. Okay. So uh, here I'm going to add some message also. First specify the key for the message. Now specify the message. This is a simple message. Okay. So now this is an example of implicit intent. So and here you can see we didn't specify any activity name here. Instead, we specify an action. So this intent is capable of invoking any activity that is uh, capable of sending data. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to start activity. So start activity and pass this intent object. Okay. So now we can test it again. So run the project again. So now the application available on this virtual device. I try to send to mail. And here is the magic. And here you can see uh, this is our activity in our application. But here you can see some other applications. That means all these applications contain an activity that is capable of sending data. That is the main significance of using an implicit intent. So by using an implicit intent, you can start some activity available in another application also. That is the main significance of using an implicit intent. Okay. Anyway, here I am going to do the job using our, our own activity. So if you save your selection, you can select always, otherwise you can select just once. So now I'm going to perform my action using our own activity available in our application. Okay. Anyway, that is the use of an implicit and explicit intent. Now I'm going to close this project. Uh, just go to that virtual device. Uh, this is our application. I just put that application to the home screen. Okay. So here I'm going to start another Android Studio project. I name the application as App B and click next. Select MT activity and click finish. Now here our second project is created. So go to the activity main. So inside activity main here I'm going to place a button. Uh, first we can specify the constraints. Change the margin into 150 dp. Change the text into sent mail and specify an click method sent to me okay so specify the uh, yeah specify within 250 okay now go to the layout now implement this method inside our activities to me okay so here also i'm going to use an implicit intent so intent Action Intent load action sent Intent load set to type text to plane. Here also just put some message for the extra message. This is a simple message okay so now start activity and pass the intent okay so now we can test it so run the project
okay that application available on this virtual device try to send to mail and here this dialog in this dialog here is our first application so application a contain an activity that is capable of sending data so i select just once so now from application b we can open an activity available in application a that is the main significance of using implicit intent <coughs> anyway i hope you understand what is the difference between explicit and implicit intent in the very next video i will show you what is the role of permissions while using implicit intent for getting more android tutorial updates please subscribe this channel now thank you for watching see you in the next video